Glory to God. He is more than enough. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thanks, guys. Y'all can be seated. Appreciate that good singing and playing. Like always, we don't take it for granted. Well, if you didn't bring a Bible with you this evening, would you hold up your hand and let our ushers get one to you so you can turn with us in the Scripture? We're going to be going to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, 1 Corinthians 12. If you didn't bring a Bible, hold up your hand. Use one of ours. Turn to 1 Corinthians 12. Let's believe God this evening. Do we value the Word? Oh, we value the Word. Above all. That's another way of saying you value Jesus above all. Because He is the Word. Made flesh. When it comes uh, to doing things, so-called for the poor, I mean, that's a relative term. There's a lot of folk that wouldn't call themselves poor, but they haven't got enough money to make it through the week this week. Right? And so it's relative thing, and I don't like the category per se uh, to, to try to limit it too much like that, but when it comes to doing things for people that are in need, the big issue is do you be open and watch around you and be led and do what the Lord deals you to do for people, and don't judge anybody else for what they're doing or not doing. That's not your business, Right? Do what the Lord deals with you to do. Obey. And don't judge anybody else. How many think it would be a different world if everybody listened to the Lord and did what he told them to do in these areas instead of judging other folk? It's a lot easier to talk and judge than it is to do. 1 Corinthians 12. Well, there's been many a time Phyllis and I were running short on something. I mean, there are times, particularly years ago, we didn't have food to eat, didn't have gas in the tank, you know, just desperate need of clothes and that kind of thing. And God dealt with people. And we didn't, we didn't beg them. We didn't go around and ask folk for stuff. But God uh, dealt with people. and They came and they did things for us and took us to eat and bought us groceries and gave us clothes and put gas in the car. Man, you'll never forget those things, Right? And so uh, be, be on the alert in your spirit. Be, be sensitive and aware of, uh, you know, maybe somebody sitting beside you or in front of you, behind you, somebody you meet in the parking lot or the restaurant. You don't even have to know them, right? Or it could be close family. Did you know your, your immediate family is good ground to sow in too? Yeah. Your wife's good ground. Your husband's good ground. <laughs> Children, your parents are good ground for you to sow in. Hmm? I said children. Your parents. Well, they're supposed to give to me. That's wrong thinking. As soon as you learn that God is your source, you need to get rid of all that thinking. Right? No man should be your source. The Lord. First Corinthians. The 12th chapter. We began last week on a new series we're calling Being Hungry for the Holy Spirit or Hungry for the Gifts of the Spirit. And we want to continue this evening. Everybody ready? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Miss Sue, well, you sure took a long time on that other stuff. I sure did. <laughs> it's important. I said it's important. It's the devil that wants us to hush up about all this. Hmm? We need to know what we believe. We need to be bold about it. Be sure. Be settled. And, and, and don't tell anybody, well, this is what they ask you, what do you believe about? Well, this is what we believe down at the church. No, he didn't ask you what the church believed. They ask you what you believe. Well, this is what Brother Keith preaches. Don't say, don't just quote me and say, well, Brother Keith said. That's not good enough to build your life on. You quote scripture. Scripture that you've seen, that you know for yourself. How many know when Jesus was tempted 
in the wilderness for those 40 days when he was pressed, those three major temptations. He didn't say when, when the enemy came and said, if you're the son of God, you know, throw yourself off a pinnacle of the temple. He didn't say, well, now we believe down to synagogue. He didn't quote Rabbi so-and-so believes and said, mm -mm, don't do that. Don't, do, don't, don't, don't quote me as the final authority. Well, Brother Keith said, that's not good enough. Brother Keith could be wrong. Or anybody else, quote the Bible. The scripture that you see that's real to you, that you know for yourself. I understand those guys that tried to rebuke that spirit, you know, and they said, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. <laughs> he said, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Ah. <laughs> I understand that this secondhand revelation don't cut it, right? I mean, you, you got to know for yourself. In the time of pressure, in the time of need, you, you can't be Satan. You know, this is, this is what our church believes, and this is what we say, and this is what our preacher says. No, no, no. What did Jesus say? It is written, and he knew it for himself. And he, and he was unmoved on it. Nobody, nothing could shake him off of it. 1 Corinthians 12, are you there? 1 Corinthians 12, 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Covet earnestly. The NIV says eagerly desire the greater gifts. Eagerly desire. The Dewey says be zealous for the better gifts. Eagerly seek. Set your hearts on. Covet. Normally when you see the word covet in Scripture, it's used in a negative sense. Don't covet. But here we're told of God to covet something. Covet's a strong word. Another, another way to say it is just to earnestly desire, to hunger for, we might say to crave, to crave. We're not supposed to think about cars all day and all night and crave cars or houses. It's all right to sow seed for one, claim, believe for one, be excited about it. That's fine. That's good. The Lord wants you to have it. But it's not okay to think about it all the time and crave it and think you can't be happy unless and until you get that. That's covetousness. The Lord is our fulfillment. We are complete in Him. We don't have to have a car <laughs> for our joy to be full. Come on now, are y'all with me? Young people, watch out for this. Well, if I could just get my car, well, if I could just, you know, get this job, well, if I could just find that perfect spouse, then I'd be complete. No, you won't be. If you're not complete without it now, you won't be complete when you get it then. Well, I'm looking for that pers perfect person to complete me. Not going to happen. <laughs> no. You are complete in Him. When two complete people get together, you got some. Two people searching, trying to find somebody to complete me. How many understand? Did you hear how selfish that is? Why do you want me in your life? So you can complete me. Uh, no thanks. How many understand? That sounds like you're getting nothing out of the deal. Your whole purpose in their life is to complete them. <laughs> Stay close to the Bible. Stay close to Bible terminology. Say it the way the Word says it. Don't add to, don't change it, don't twist it around. If you don't see any scriptures in there about you believing to find somebody to complete you, don't talk it. Find the Bible. Find the Word. Now, 
This is an insidious thing. And don't think that you're immune to it. I'm telling you, Christians, even Christians that know some word, are using terminology and saying stuff and praying stuff all the time that's just not biblical. It's not right. That's why we need to keep our little nose in this book every day, right? And feed our faith and feed our spirit. Why? Because it's going to be alerting us that, well, no, that, I've got to quit saying that because this says it this way. Right? No, I can't be praying that because he told us to pray this. And we need this continual mind renewal. That's the only way we're going to be, you know, growing and becoming more like him and getting our mind renewed. In uh, verse 31, he said, do what? Covet. Earnestly. Covet means to have a warmth of feeling for fervency fervency are we there one person <laughs> well the rest of us got to stir up <laughs> right <laughs> what am I talking about are we there what no. fervently more than any teenager ever wanted a car, right. we want the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. Yes. Right. More than any person ever wanted a spouse, right. we want the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. You understand why I'm saying it this way? Because that is not the case with the masses of Christianity. More than anybody ever wanted a house, more than anybody that ever lived ever wanted jewelry or clothes, or any of these things, or a promotion, we covet. I mean, we crave it. We think about it night and day. We got gifts of the Spirit on the brain. Oh, y'all help me with this now. I said, is that right? I just read Scripture. The Lord told us to do something, to covet something. When you covet something, you think about it night and day. You dream about it. Right? When you covet something, it means you want it, 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 you want it. You get up wanting it. You want it at lunch. You want it at break time. And you go to bed wanting it. You want it. You want it. You want it. You just are not willing not to have it. You got to have it. You want it. You crave it. You desire it. And we're to do this with what? The gifts. The gifts. The gifts. Of the Holy Spirit. Well, back up to the first verse. 1 Corinthians 12. What do you say now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren? I would what? Not... Have you ignorant? That's how he started out. Now, when the Bible says, I don't want you to be ignorant about this, when God says, what would you know? That unless you make some effort, <laughs> you are going to be ignorant of it, or he wouldn't have said it this way. And, oh, dear me, you don't have to look around far. Most churches don't even believe in these. I know that's a big statement, but it's we're in the minority of believing that all of these are supernatural manifestations and gifts of the Spirit, and they're for us now. We're in the minority. A few more believe it on paper, but never talk about it. And so we must do something about that within ourselves. We must stir up. We must preach about it and teach about it and talk about it and think about it, and get up wanting them, and go to bed wanting them, and desire them in faith, expecting that we'll have them. Now, if it's something you could just produce on your own, you wouldn't have to desire it. You'd just produce it. So these must not be things you can produce or do on your own. Like the Scripture said, they're divided to every man individually as the Spirit wills. 
So it must not just be up to us, or instead of wanting them, we'd just do them. And the gifts of the Spirit must not be something in us that we can just turn off and on when we want to. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to covet them earnestly. We'd just do them. Do you see this? These things are supernatural. They're not by the will of man or by the whim of man. You hear people, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of ignorance about it, like we just read, and a lot of confusion about it. You hear people talking about, I've got such and such gift. And they talk like, you know, well, I, I can... I can do this or that because I've got this gift. None of these are such that you can just turn them off and on at will. You can't just give yourself a word of knowledge. I don't care how much you fast and pray, how hard you push, how hard you strain your brain. I'm going to give myself a word of No, you just give yourself a headache maybe. He said, I don't want you to be ignorant about these things. Let's read about them. 1 Corinthians 12. He said, verse 4, there are diversities of gifts, different, not just one gift or one kind of gift, different kinds of gifts, but it's the same Spirit. Differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Diversities of operation, but it's the same God which works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. How many of us can expect to have these things manifested in our lives? Every one of us. Is this Bible? Not just a few super spiritual people that pray extra and fast extra. Every one of us can and should have some manifestation of these throughout our life. Every one of us. Say every one of us. Every man, he said. Verse 8, for to one, now here he begins to emphasize the differences in them. Like he said, they're differences of gifts. To one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. And then what he says, to another. So is everybody going to get the same kind of manifestations in their life? Uh Uh-uh. Going to be different. To another, the word of knowledge. By the same Spirit. To another. What does that mean? Another one yet. Another one. uh, Faith. By the same Spirit. To what? Another. The gifts of healing. By the same Spirit. Then he says it again. To another one. We might say the working of miracles. To another one prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another one the kinds of different kinds of tongues. To another one the interpretation of the tongues. But all these work at that one and the self same spirit dividing to who? Every. Every man severally or individually as he will. So we're not all going to be used in the same way. We're not all going to have the same manifestations of the spirit. And yet all of us can expect some. One or two or three or more of these at different times in our life. Not at our whim. And yet we're supposed to be having them. Right? Now, people tend to spectacularize these things and miss it. This is supposed to be a way of life to us. We're not talking about that you have to be caught up in a trance or that you see an an angel come to you and talk to you. These kind of things can happen, but that's the exception, not the rule. You can be driving to work, just driving to work down the road and get a word of knowledge, just like that, just like that. Know something that there's no way you could have known, right? Revelation. Utterance. This is supposed to be a normal way of life for us. How's it going to come? It begins by us coveting them. How many of us know that if you covet them, you must think they're valuable? You must think they're important. And in the midst of churches and preachers and people all over the place that preach against them, don't even believe in them, that's what we're dealing with. We've got to stir up and say, no, these are precious. These are important. They're very important. 
In fact, I'm not going to live without them. I've, I've got to have this in my life. Got to have it. Now, let's go to the end of the list and begin to talk about these. The last one that he mentioned was kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Somebody say kinds of tongues. And then he said interpretation of tongues. He said to one, different kinds of or kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. Uh, notice the phrase divers is, is in italics, but the word kinds, K-I-N-D-S, kinds of tongues. Are there more than one kind of tongue? The word tongue literally means, uh, you know, like the tongue that's in your mouth, but by implication, the language that the tongue speaks. Are there different kinds of tongues? Yes. Look in uh, the uh, 13th chapter, first verse. Are y'all with me tonight? Yes. Help, me, help me with this now. Believe with me. I believe some things are supposed to happen tonight before we get away. Not just make a few, few notes. Some things are supposed to happen. Right? So I said, well, I, I don't know about this tongue stuff. I'm believing that before we get through, you will know about it. Amen. Well, I don't speak in tongues. I'd like for you to before we leave. Amen. It's available to you. Well, I don't know about it. That's why I'm talking. Follow me in the scriptures. Look at every scripture. Be open. Be, be open to the Lord. Let him show you. I just don't think I, I believe in all that. Well, would you be open if the Lord told you it was right for you? If he told you it's what he wanted for you, would you be open to that? Somebody say different kinds of tongues. In the 13th chapter and the first verse, he said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity or love, I'm become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. A lot of revelation in this verse about tongues. One, we see tongues, plural, of men, and the implication is tongues, plural, of angels. How many different tongues of men are there? Boy, a lot of them. There, there are some, some small countries where there's 20 different dialects just in that one, we'd call it a county almost, or a couple of three counties. There are many different tongues and languages in the world. And here he mentions tongues of angels, apparently different kinds of tongues of angels. And the implication is that we could speak in any of these. It's a possibility that we could speak in some or one or number, number of different ones of tongues of men and tongues of angels. So we can't speak tongues of angels. Read the verse. Read the verse. Though what? I speak with the tongues of men and... What does that mean? Though I speak with the tongues of angels. How in the world would you do that? By faith. By faith and by the utterance of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a lot of people that don't believe in speaking in tongues, obviously. There's a whole lot more people that don't believe in speaking in tongues than that does. And there's a lot of folks that find us uh, quite strange. Right? And if we all stand up and go to speaking in tongues, it actually scares some folk. They go, oh, man, I'm getting out of here. These people are crazy. But it's in the Bible. I said it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible in numerous places. Right? So I said, well, I, I think that was just for them then. And uh, that's all passed away. In fact, I heard my preacher say that. 
Well, you may have heard it, but that doesn't make it so. Uh, Paul, skip down in the 14th chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians and verse 18. Paul said, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Now, they had excess of tongues. They were speaking in tongues when they shouldn't have been. They were doing it the wrong way. He's having to correct them. You know, here's a real thought right here. We're going to talk about this, a couple of these verses in just a moment that people use to try to say tongues are not for us today. But why would the Lord give us a whole chapter in the New Testament giving us instructions on this when it was only for a few people for a few days. Hmm? That doesn't make sense. It shouldn't be in the Holy Scripture for all generations. And why do we need any instructions on how to talk in tongues and it ain't for us nowadays? <laughs> huh? I mean, he goes into detail by the Spirit of God about what we're supposed to do in the services and what to do and what not to do and what to, how to talk in tongues when you're at home by yourself, how to talk in tongues when you're in church, how to interpret who's supposed to, when, and where. We don't even need that chapter. I mean, a lot of folk, I guess, if they had their way, they'd just tear this out and say, well, that's all passed away. That's not far. But I mean, you do that with one chapter. Who's to say you're not going to do it with another chapter tomorrow? Right? And another chapter, and again and again, who is it that are saying this has passed away and not for us? It's people who don't speak in tongues. And what they're doing is they're watering down the Bible to match their lack of experience. If we'll be honest about the Bible, all of us, you, me, all of us, day in, day out, week in, week out, we're going to come across things and we'll read them in the Scripture and go, hmm, I hadn't done that yet. <laughs> we're not seeing that in our life, right? You, me, all of us, all the time throughout our life, we're going to read something and go, I haven't had that yet, haven't seen that yet. And when you do, you got a choice, don't you? You read it, there it is, it's real, you understand it, but you don't have it. You got a choice. What's your choice? You can either try to explain it away, make, you know, find some reasons why it's not for me or doesn't apply to me or not for now or, or whatever, or what else could you do? You could say, Lord, I see that. I see that and I'm not there, but I'm going to ask you to help me. Believe, I'm going to believe you to elevate my life and my experience and help me to get to the place in faith and understanding where I can walk in this. Yes. Right? Yeah. Instead of watering down the Word, explaining it away to make it fit your life, believe God to elevate your life yeah. to match the Bible, oh. match the Word. Yeah. All of us will be doing that. All, there was a time I was a believer. I got saved, born again as a boy. But I didn't speak in tongues for years. And I, I saw it in the Bible. I saw it in the book of Acts. I saw it, and I kept seeing it. And that's what I did. I said, Lord, I don't have this. I don't see this. And I struggled with it because of wrong teaching and lack of understanding. I struggled. I went months and years trying to get filled with the Spirit. I didn't have to. I was just thinking wrong. But it would have been so much easier any time along the way to just say, well, now I think maybe this has passed away like they all said. and I think maybe it's not for everybody and not for me and not for today. And hmm? I'm glad I didn't. Amen. I said, I'm glad I didn't. I kept on pursuing it. It was valuable to me. Yeah. I said it was valuable to me. I saw value in it and I, I desired it. I desired it. And through my ignorance and through other people even telling me wrong stuff and every other thing, I stayed after it month after month after month until the Lord got me to the right thing and I saw right and thought right and received and started talking in tongues and been doing it ever since. <laughs> so these tongue talkers, these tongue talkers, I just don't know about them. Well, now you, do you know who you're talking about? You're talking about Paul? 
and Peter and all the apostles in the upper room and all the disciples, all the churches at Corinth and all of them at Ephesus and Colossae and Philippi, tongue talkers. <laughs> tongue talkers. Are y'all with me now? Tongue talkers. And there's always been folk, it's a matter of historical record. Ever since the day of Pentecost, there have been groups throughout the earth that speak in tongues. Let's go to a couple of scriptures that people try to use to say that tongues are not for us nowadays, and let's talk about them. One is chapter 13, 1 Corinthians 13, and verse 8. 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Y'all all happy tonight? Yes. Are you okay? Yes. You got a few minutes or not? Yes. I went long on the offering. Should I cut this one short? No. Huh? No. I don't think so. It's Friday night, right? Yes. Hey. A lot of you guys used to lay out late partying on Friday night. Start hollering about it. A few minutes in church. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Verse 9, for we know in part... And we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. A number of people will take that verse and say, well, you know, the Bible said tongues would cease, and so they have. Well, you can't just take a piece out of the verse. You've got to keep the verse together. Right? Right? What did he say, verse 8? Look at it again. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Have all the prophecies ceased to be? Are there still prophecies being fulfilled? Still prophecies coming out and being fulfilled? Well, let's skip the tongues part, then go to the other part. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Has knowledge vanished away, no. passed away, no. ceased? No. Well, then how can you just take one in the middle and pull it out and say, this has already ceased? Doesn't work. See, people are trying to match, make the Bible fit their lack of experience is what's going on. No, look at the next part, verse 9. For we know in part... And we prophesy in part, verse 10, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. That's referring back to the three things he mentioned. We're prophesying in part. We don't know fully what we're prophesying. Right? Uh, we, our knowledge is partial. We know a little bit, but there's so much we don't know. And our tongues. Did you know there was a time when there was only one tongue in the earth? You remember reading about that in Genesis? The whole earth, the Bible said. In fact, I'll get you to put it up on the screen. It's in Genesis, is it 11? Genesis 11, 1. Just pop it up on the screen there if you can. Genesis 11, 1. The whole earth was of one language and one speech. And they tried to use their unity, which God himself said was powerful, against God to go their own way, and he found it necessary to divide their languages. And so that's when the different, you know, if you study languages at all, you'll find they have uh, similar roots, and that's because they all came from the same one. And all of the languages of the earth will one of these days be done away with. 
How many understand when you get to heaven, you won't round the corner into a different part of heaven and not understand the language? <laughs> they go, man, I got to get out of here. I don't know. What kind of people is this? I don't understand a word you're saying. Not going to happen in heaven. Why? Because all that will be done away with. And we won't be speaking in tongues in heaven. Why? We won't need to speak out of our spirit beyond our mind. Our mind will be up with our spirit. <laughs> oh, come on now. But at this present hour, have we been made perfect in knowledge? Have we arrived? Or are we still seeing through a glass darkly? Well, then prophecies are still with us, and then knowledge is still with us, and tongues are still with us. So that's an incorrect interpretation, application of that scripture. Tongues are still with us. Say it out loud. Tongues are for today. Different kinds of tongues are still for today. Uh, back up to the 12th chapter where we just were. Let's look at another. This is another scripture that a lot of folk use to Try to say tongues are not for us, not for everybody. Uh, verse 27. Verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church... First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Then he starts asking a question, are all apostles? What's the answer? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Have all the gifts of healings? No. Do all speak with tongues? Obvious answer is no. Do all interpret? Obvious answer is no. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So a lot of people that don't speak in tongues have seized on this, and they say, well, see, the Bible says right there, do all speak in tongues, and the obvious answer is no. And that's right, the obvious answer is no. But remember, it's not just tongues, it's different kinds of tongues. None of these things that he's talking about in this passage have to do with individual and personal edification. Look through the list. The apostle's prophet. Is that so he can minister to himself? Uh-uh. Prophets. God anoint prophets so they can sit around and minister to themselves, prophesy to themselves. No. Teachers, workers of miracles, gifts of healings. These are all ministry anointings to others. He's talking about ministry gifts. There is a ministry a flow, I should say it like that, a ministry, just like there's a ministry flow of healing, a ministry flow of working the miracles, there's a ministry flow of speaking in tongues and interpretation. Ministry, somebody say ministry. ministry. Does everybody have that ministry? No. no. But can everybody speak in tongues yeah. in their own life? Yeah. Somebody say yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Say it again, yes. 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 What did Paul, in, in this what, 14th chapter, what did he say about speaking in tongues? Look at the uh, second verse. Well, verse 1 will be fine.
follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Well, that wouldn't be so with the ministry flow. Here he's talking about a different kind of tongue, right? Apostles' ministry is two people. Prophets, two people. Teachers, two people, right? And here in the same list is tongues and interpretation of tongues. Here, though, he's talking about you just speaking in tongues and it being unto God. No man understands him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Now, this solidifies that this is not a language that one learned. There are those that try to make this fit into their concept, and they say, well, yes, we have people that are linguists, and they have a gift of being able to learn different languages, and they become, you know, trilingual, and they know five languages and ten languages, and they have the gift of tongues. No, no. It's not what this is talking about at all. This is talking about a, a language, a tongue the speaker does not know. A language the speaker did not learn. No. He that prophesies speaks unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. But he that speaks in a tongue, unknown tongue, edifies himself. Does this do any good? This speaking in tongues. That's usually the next question to people that don't speak in tongues. They say, well, what good does it do? All this jabbering and carrying on. What, what good does all that do? Well, read the Bible, brother. He that speaks in a tongue does what? Edifies, builds himself up. That word edify means to build up. One commentator said uh, it, it has the idea of like putting a battery on charge. <laughs> Charging the battery. Well, would that do you any good? That you're praying in tongues, praying in tongues, and it's charging you up. It's building you up on the inside. But Jude 20 said, but you, beloved, building up yourselves, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I believe in it. it. Now look at verse uh, 5. What did he say? I would that you all spoke with tongues. Hold on, hold on. Everybody? Everybody? Yeah, but what if it ceased and passed away? Couldn't be if he said this. Right? I would that all of you, you all spoke with tongues, but rather that you prophesy. Now keep reading. For greater is he that prophesies. Now let's just stop here. What did our text say? Covet earnestly the best gifts. Or actually, if you look up that word, it has to do with greater. Greater. And he says, I, he said, I, I would like for all of you to speak in tongues. But rather that you may prophesy. But keep reading. Keep reading. For greater, there's that word is he that prophesies than he that speaks with tongues except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Here we see that tongues with interpretation is the equivalent of prophecy. And that these are available to us all. That's why he would not say, I would that you all. How many remember Mark 16? Jesus said, these signs will follow them that believe. Right? What did he say? In my name they will speak with new tongues. I've heard people say, well, that means, you know, you quit cussing and you clean up your life. No, no. You got to interpret Bible language in in verses that use the same language. No. No. He's talking about just this right here, speaking in tongues. One of the signs that is to follow modern New Testament believers is tongue talking. Right? Jesus said so. Aren't you glad you're a tongue talker? 
And if you're not, aren't you glad you're in the place where you can begin to be right now? Tonight, you can't. It, oh, it's, it's easy than, easier than you know. Easier than you know. But before you're ever going to speak in tongues, you've got to accept the Bible that it's right and that it's for today and that it's for you now. Because if you don't believe that and you don't accept that, you never will. Thank God. Skip down to the 18th verse and see what, you know. One, actually, one theologian one time wrote in his dissertation, obviously not a tongue talker himself, he wrote down and said, Paul had a, quite a dim view of speaking in tongues. I thought, brother, if you are, brother, <laughs> have you read the Bible? What did he say? This bunch that he had to write, the, the Lord, Holy Ghost had to give a whole chapter of instruction to because they were just talking in tongues was out of control. He says in verse 18, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than all of you. The tongue talking is bunch in the Bible. Paul said, I got you beat. <laughs> you think you talk in tongues? I talk in tongues more. Must be valuable. Must be important. How many know he must have been a built up man? To do what he did and God to use him all the places that he went, all the things that he went through and came out of and overcame. It, he had to get some building up somewhere, some strengthening from somewhere. He said, I, I, I speak in tongues more than all of you. Now one reason we're talking about this tonight in the beginning of our series is because I can see a connection between this and all the gifts of the Spirit. And I see a connection that if you reject this, that you also close off yourself from the other gifts and manifestations of the Spirit. So this is extremely important. What you do with tongues affects all the rest of the gifts of the Spirit. If you yield your tongue, how many know the Bible talks about the tongue being like the steering wheel, like the rudder on the ship, like the bit in the horse's mouth. If you got the steering wheel, you can control the car. If you got the rudder, you can control the ship. If you got the bit and bridle, you can control the horse. If you got the tongue, you control the whole man. What if you can yield your tongue to the Holy Spirit? Then you are well on your way to yielding your whole life. Oh, somebody needed to say amen about that. I said, you are well on your way to yielding your entire life to him. What if you don't yield your tongue to him? Well, the opposite would be so. You're, you're struggling with yielding your life to his. Uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin, my father in the faith, he made this observation. I've heard him say it time after time after time, and he did a lot of talking in tongues himself. I was around him a lot, and he did. A lot of talking in tongues. He said this. He said, the more I pray and worship God in tongues, the more manifestations of the other gifts of the Spirit I have. The less I speak in tongues, the less of the other manifestations I have. Speaking with tongues is the door into the rest of the spiritual gifts. Did you hear that? You want me to read it again? He said, the more I pray and worship God in tongues. Now see, not all tongues is intercession. A lot of times when we see what they were saying in tongues were given the interpretation, they were praising God. They were giving glory to God. Telling about the wonderful works of God. He, he mentions in these same chapters we're reading that if you give thanks in the spirit or with tongues, you give thanks well. You could actually give thanks for your food in tongues. Sounds strange to us, doesn't it? But then he says if somebody's there that doesn't understand these things, you're not edifying them. But yet we ought to be around folk that do understand these things at least part of the time. 
He said, the more I pray and worship God in tongues, the more manifestations of other gifts of the Spirit I have. The less I speak in tongues, the less of the other manifestations I have. Speaking with tongues is the door into all the rest of the spiritual gifts. If we're hungry for the gifts of the Spirit, and this is true, it ought to stir us up. Are we hungry? Everybody stand up on your feet. Are we hungry for the gifts of the Spirit? Or am I just talking to myself tonight? Do do we desire word of knowledge? Somebody say word of knowledge. knowledge. I mean say it dreamily. Word of knowledge. How about word of wisdom? (laughs) Word of wisdom. So I don't know what that is. It's good. Discerning of spirits. Think about it. Say it. Do you want it? Do you desire it? Gifts of healings. Someone said, well, I believe in healing. No, this is something else. I mean, all healing is the same in essence in nature, but this is a different operation than you just standing and claiming your healing. This is something different yet. Say working of miracles. How does that sound? Working of miracles. Would that be good? Would you be happy when that manifested? Glory to God. Glory to God. Prophecy. Prophecy. Thank you, Father. Faith, he said. Faith. There's a faith beyond the normal faith you walk in day to day. It's a faith that can, God can drop down in your spirit. Nothing seems impossible to you. You just look at it and dare it not to come to pass. I said, I've never had that. Yeah, and there's a lot of folk never talked in tongues either. But it's all still there. If we really desire these things, and this is true, that speaking in tongues is the doorway into it, and the more we do that, the more of the other have, we already know two huge things to get us on the path tonight. One, desire them, hunger for them, covet them, think about them, Talk about them, dream about them, desire them, and do what? Talk in tongues, talk in tongues, talk in tongues in the morning, talk in tongues in between meals, talk in tongues, talk in tongues when you're riding in your car, talk in tongues when you're sweeping the floor, talk in tongues when you're making the bed, talk in tongues, talk in tongues, talking in tongues. Let me see, y'all are just weird. Well, you'd have called all these people weird too, including Paul himself. You think he's weird too then? No, it's not weird to God. It's His way. How about let's practice some of it right now. Just close your eyes, lift up your hands, begin to speak in tongues. Every Elexanomi, ele so mombri banale bedigi, e vele godoje do done mangambi and ere banane venoci. Oh, sulle vrebave le mofu comer and begreman in a man de von a barri. Evle man ev gomer and bring zandi von a gomber and bread ginning a dog de vamiane barri. Vele emblemen se van a gombe de venomang de veni meneve de gove la blame and the de. Evelie Blavid is it of Vava, the Grabe Givada, the Dogobe, and Joe Stony Manadi. Elev Lamandi van the Gombe de Vama and Bremen de Dingen in Novel and Breng de Gasto, de Gasto, de Gasto, de Gasto, de Gasto. Divle Boss in the Vomar and Breng de Gonzade, but on Dogen in Nushe, Nushe. Les dovel and blank bane von dog jane etis city. Hallelujah. In your heart, give thanks with another tongue. Give thanks and tell of the glory of God. Tell of the goodness of God out of your spirit by faith. Oh, Father, we worship you. Of no man glog zambadi ochi. We give thanks to you. Men mandig zande. 
oxum bedognonte esse coflabare o stuge embese o pice o duve o tonse o comble o tive o menze o page nimbria tosco le prare vadoci you are the greatest you are the male blomong sove an man de antachi you are magnificent You the mangale promotion doce. You the salato. You the zenane. You the zenombre. E friduge alle cose lade, nembre, esti, frotti, belenince, alle corredorati, e cristi, namande, o loste, of la e de loste. De loste. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, what happens when you do, I mean, we, we didn't pray in tongues a minute or two. What happens the longer you do that? What happens? You get, you get more out of your mind and in your spirit. Well, the gifts of the spirit are spiritual. Not mental, not physical. Can you see why Brother Hagin would say that? The more you pray in tongues, the more you pray in the Spirit, the more of the other manifestations of the Spirit. Why? It's, it's the same source, right? Same source. And the more you get in tune and in line with Him, you're going to get other things from Him. Not only utterance in another tongue, but you're going to get other things. Other things. Somebody say, praise God. Praise now, if you're here this evening and you don't speak in tongues, you're at the right place. We can pray for you right now. And you can speak in tongues right now. Somebody say, you think so, brother? No, I know so. Done this many times. Many times. And seen thousands and thousands and thousands of folk filled with the Spirit. We, I, I've seen hundreds of people filled in one service in one night. Laid hands on them, saw them speak in tongues. I mean, they were lined up all over the place and just spoke in tongues, spoke in tongues. Spoke. Well, what is, how do I know it's for me? Because it's for everybody. Amen. Everybody. You don't need a special revelation. It's for everybody. How do I know it's still for us today? Well, didn't you hear us just now? Isn't this today? Well, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't accept it. Well, you're not going to have it. You're not going to be bothered with it. But if you are here and you go, yeah, I see it. I see it in the Bible. I believe it. How many remember Acts 2, 4? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. People got filled again in Acts 10 and spoke in tongues. People got filled again in Acts 19 and spoke in tongues. We see it again and again. Paul said, I talk in tongues more than all of you. If you're here this evening, you say, yeah, Brother Keith, I'd like to be filled with the Spirit. Raise your hand. Let me see you. Let me pray for you. Yeah, come right on down. If you raised your hand, come right on down to the front. Real simple. If you say, yeah, I love God. I'm a believer, but I've, I've never experienced this. I've never uh, spoken in tongues like you all do. Come right on down. This belongs to you. This is for you. Watch out for the water there. Come right, Just stand right here. That's good. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful, guys. Come right on. Anybody. Anybody in the place? Don't have it real simple. Somebody said, I'm not a tongue talker yet. Well, tonight you're not. Come right on. Come right on. Tonight you're not. This belongs to every child of God. Every believer has this privilege and have this right. This belongs to you. Don't miss out now. Now, if you're watching by TV or Internet, you say, well, I wish I was there. You are here. In the Spirit, you are here. And he, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit, not me. And so you can be filled. So just get up and move closer to the, uh, your, your computer screen or wherever you are and get ready. Now Jesus said, if a son would ask for bread, would his father give him a stone? Of course not. If he asked for a fish, would he give him a snake? Of course not. And he said, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? 
So we have the Lord's word for it that if we ask him for the Holy Spirit, he gives. Now, every time that a person asks in faith to be filled with the Spirit, every time God gives, every time. The Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, and he's never left. He's still here. He's been here. Nobody has to wait on him. He's, he's here. But the difference is in believing you receive and yielding. Again and again, when they were all filled with the Spirit, they spoke in other tongues. Now, the language is they spoke. It's not the Holy Ghost speaking. It's you speaking. And you'll have to speak. Use your tongue. Use your lips. Use your vocal cords just like you do when you speak in English or any other language. The, the Lord's not going to make you talk against your will. You've got to speak yourself. Yeah. Use your tongue. Use your lips. You've you got to make yourself speak. The difference is it's not coming out of your head. The utterance is coming out of your spirit. How does that work? You don't have to understand it. All you got to do is believe you receive and speak. I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. I'm going to lead you in a prayer, pray for you. I'm going to lay hands on you. When I do, the Holy Spirit's going to come on you. You think so, Burger? No, I know so. I know so. He's, he's here right now. He's going to come on you. And when he does, you'll be able at that moment to speak out of your spirit. Now, when you do, don't speak in English or some other language that you know. Don't try to imagine anything. Just by faith, begin to try to express your love to the Lord and your faith in Him. And the bolder you are to speak out, the better it'll flow. Everybody reach your hands out toward these folk and join with them. And when we start speaking in tongues down here, y'all join us back there. Don't think about it. Just speak. Everybody say it out loud. Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son Jesus, I in your son, Jesus. that he paid, he paid the price for all my sins. All my sins. I, believe I believe you've raised him from the dead. Raised from the dead. Jesus, Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. I belong to you. Thank you, Thank you. for saving me Save and washing me Wash from all my sins. You said, you said, if I would ask you, would ask you for, the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, you would give him to me. Him to me. I, know I know he's here. He's, here. he's, in, me, he's in me. But I'm asking you, I'm asking you let, him me, let him come upon me. Let him fill me up, him fill me up with your holy presence. Your holy presence. Fill me. With the, Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, and give me utterance, give me utterance. In, a new in a new tongue, I believe I receive, I believe I receive. and by faith I speak. Ofne mankale plesote, of di baron di venongse, don't think, just speak. Of le man di barodi, es di ve, that's it, speak right out. Of le mandagze, e le vraman di vengobin en non gi alebre, that's it, be bold. Scole vre doji, levre da manze golon de vro noze levredi, evle manon song de vene beci. Speak out, o levro dose in the name of Jesus, malevro nonze vengale brenasi, elevre domen and goze nevici, elevre name ze delevre noze, balevre nonde, dose, don't think, you speak, by faith. That's it, that's it, you're doing good. Speak out, lovele mandanze galembre mandaji. Lavri da base go lovre da doji. Lavri demeni non se venambe de gambe de doji. Don't be silent now, speak. Go, that's it, that's it. Lovre mandaga le bromen de zili. Lavri na mengzi ande van gombre nambe le vrai de bedoji. Lavri da bose gale vramande venon de banazi vereji. Lay, that's it, be bold. Scalivre, that's it, lovre banongi. Lavri de bezi lak doji lak dovre do basi. Let speak out bold, be loud, speak right out. Man, don't be silent. Don't think, speak. May livre nosi, co livre nange, levre mandesi, co livre nonge, devle mambasi, devle manon vele bronze vere beci, chi livre dose golori, devresti, setici, togosi, levrendi, manasse, dodosi, lenesi. Hallelujah. 
Look at me just a moment, guys. Now, some of you are doing real well. Some of you are speaking right out real good. Some of you are having a little, uh, starting a little slow. And I know about this because I did. I was a slow starter. I mean, one of the slowest you ever saw. <laughs> it took me years to get this because I was taught wrong. I actually said this on more than one occasion. This is back 35 years ago. I said, well, if you ever hear me talking in tongues, it won't be me. <laughs> and I thought I was real whatever. I don't know what I thought. But that's just not true. Because, I see, I'm thinking the Holy Ghost is just going to come on me and make me do it. He's just going to do it through me, apart from me, independent of me, and that's not how it works. Remember, listen to the Scripture. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak. Who began to speak? Amen. Same ones that got filled. They were filled. Who began to speak? They began to speak. We didn't get to the rest of the Scriptures, but there in, in Corinthians. He said, if I speak in an unknown tongue, my spirit speaks or prays. If who speaks? I, who's doing the speaking? I'm doing the speaking. The, the fact that I'm speaking is not supernatural. I'm using my tongue, my lips, my vocal cords. The, the, the supernatural part is where the utterance is coming from. It's not coming out of my head. It's coming out of my spirit. Oh, can you say glory to God? And uh, I've seen several times where people that, you know, they just, because it was in front of the crowd or, or the preacher, whoever, they just, they weren't comfortable yielding. I've seen some of the same folk go home and lay across the bed and, and just lay there and get quiet and just start speaking and just speak in tongues in a blue streak and do it the rest of their life. Uh, I, I want you to get so imperative, guys, right now. I want you to say this out loud and mean it. Say, I believe. I, believe. I, have, received I have received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. He's, in me. He's in me. He's on me. He's on me. I asked. He gave, he gave. I, receive. I receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I believe you've received. So important. Let anybody talk you out of this. And, and the issue is not trying to receive now. The issue is learning how to yield. Yes. Learning how to yield. And the more you do, the better it is. The longer you pray in the Spirit, the better it gets. The easier it gets. Until you, I mean, you can get to the place where, man, you're flowing so free. It seems like it's not you and yet it's still you. So everybody, are you ready again? Those up in the front here, close your eyes. Close your eyes. And let's everybody, now, now don't be quiet. Don't, don't uh, speak in a known tongue or English, but by faith. Somebody say, well, what, what will I say? You don't know. It's by faith. What will it sound like? Don't listen to it. Don't try to figure it out. You wouldn't understand all the tongues of men and angels anyway. You wouldn't know whether it was a language or not. You're not qualified to discern all that. Just by faith, speak. Everybody lift your voice in the congregation. Confre mendeschi, le frambat do son di frengo prenale, e flamondi govondi barembrese le brodoggi, de la gomma non su de valembron di vengaie, e lesti, impresse, don't think, speak. Mendi frenon se lo doge le gotti, celebre balsi galembron di valembrese, brese, brese, Breze, male frenons e l'engramba de lesti, e flamansong de van gom in de gele fremant. Don't think, don't think, speak. Bello fremant se condivre in embele brannange l'embrodi, de le fremant se condembre mendigi, je le fremant be denen se condande blemase, e flemambare o doji lo dosi, che le fredobasso so di fredogi, Bele vredeva di vale braba di vgole fredabe di vredi, bele vrename on zonde gonongi e shete o zode en pese e kede o toshe o dine on tape o sula on donne adishe. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. I hear some tongue talking up here. Amen. Well, guys, now, if, you, if you're not speaking as freely and strongly as you, you'd like to be, don't be troubled. Don't be upset. It's just a matter of learning how to yield. Keep coming around here, and you'll hear a lot more of it. 
And uh, when you get quiet by yourself, lay down. And, and the big key is speaking, speaking. You, you, as long as you're quiet, you're never going to speak in tongues. You have to, by faith, speak. What am I going to say? It's by faith. It's by faith. And the more you do, the stronger it'll flow. Glory to God. And there'll be people standing up here at the front of the service in just a minute. If you've got more questions about it, feel free to ask them. They'll help you as well. You can return to your seats. Everybody rejoice with them. Everybody rejoice with them. Hallelujah. What you going to sing, Susan? Huh? Let's sing, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's sing this. Everybody say, I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. He's my comforter, my helper, of him I do thank Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. When I need to pray, I don't know when I need to make a move, but Lord, which way do I go? Teach me, Lord, how to follow. Teach me, Lord, how to flow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Everybody lift up your hands and your voice. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. My helper, on him I do depend. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, say thank you, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. He's my comforter. to sing the same thing as we go. If you still got questions about being filled with the Holy Spirit, there's going to be people standing down here right now. They'll be glad to talk to you. It's not too late. They'll be glad to answer your questions and help you. This is important. This is more important than going to bed tonight. Right? More important than eating a snack. It's my, right? This is important. Say, I desire the gifts of the Spirit. I'm hungry for the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Well, go singing. Oh, for the Holy Ghost. He's my comforter, my helper. Oh, on him I do depend. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Oh, when I need to pray, when I need to pray. But I don't know when I need to make a move. But Lord, which way do I go? Teach me, Lord, how to follow. Teach me, Lord, how to flow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Oh, say thank you. 